Hi, my name is Diasha. In the series so far, we've observed the reactions that took place when we burnt alkali metals in pure oxygen and then dissolved the metal oxides in water. We've also learned how to represent the chemical changes we observe by writing balanced chemical equations. In the following two lessons, we will carry out similar tests on the alkaline earth metals. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to, for each of the reactions that you see, describe the observations, name the products, and write balanced chemical equations for these reactions. Can you remember where we find the alkaline earth metals on the periodic table? Let's refresh our memories. The group 2 metals are called the alkaline earth metals. The metals beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium and radium make up this group. These metals do not occur in their elemental form but rather as compounds in the earth's crust. As a matter of fact most of us have never seen these metals as pure elements. However, you may know of these metals in some of their complex compound forms. For example, calcium carbonate is found in the chalk that your teacher uses to write on the board, as well as in marble tabletops and floors. Beryllium is most often seen as emeralds. These are beryl crystals with traces of chromium to give them their distinctive green color. Barium compounds are found in spark plugs. Radium is a radioactive substance used to treat people suffering from cancer. The closest thing to a pure form of magnesium we have seen is the mag wheels found in cars. These mag wheels are produced from a magnesium alloy that is a mixture of metals with magnesium as the main ingredient. We have chosen to do experiments with magnesium and calcium to show how alkaline earth metals react. Let's see what these two metals look like. Magnesium is a light grey colour and it is shiny. It is usually found in thin strips in a laboratory. If magnesium is exposed to air for too long, it forms a dull grey outer layer that has to be sandpapered off. Although magnesium is pretty hard, a piece can be torn or cut off. Calcium is stored in an airtight container. It is a light grey shiny colour. However, it is easily coated with a black layer when left unprotected in air. It is harder than magnesium. Before we look at today's experiments, I want you to think back to the test we performed on the alkali metals. Do you recall that potassium is the element situated lowest down in group 1 and is the most reactive of the three alkali metals we tested? I wonder if the same trend applies to the alkaline earth metals. Will calcium or magnesium be more reactive? Let's look at the experiments and see if we can find an answer. We will now look at the alkaline earth metals. Magnesium and calcium are burned in pure oxygen. We then test the metal oxides that form during the reaction for solubility and pH, just like we did for the alkali metals. While you look at these experiments, I want you to think about whether the position of an element in its group has any effect on its reactivity. First, a piece of magnesium is torn from the ribbon. It needs to be sandpapered lightly to remove any dull coating that might have formed. Next, the piece of magnesium is wrapped around a combustion spoon and set alight over the flame of a Bunsen burner. As soon as it is burning, it is plunged into a jar filled with pure oxygen. Wow, that is quite a reaction. Did you see how the bright white flame that the magnesium burned with in air turned into an almost blinding white light in pure oxygen? Can you see the white powder product called magnesium oxide that forms during the reaction? We need to reserve this product for further testing. Now, let's look as this experiment is repeated with a sample of calcium. Notice that calcium burns with a very bright brick red flame when placed in pure oxygen. Calcium oxide is the product that forms during this reaction. This white powder is once again reserved for further testing. I'm sure you can see 
that calcium is more reactive than magnesium. This means that the lower down a metal element is in its group on the periodic table, the more reactive it is. I hope you can see that when we do science experiments, we don't just have fun, but we need to be thinking about what these experiments tell us. In this way, we can draw conclusions and make predictions. Now, there's one more thing we need to do after observing a chemical reaction. You've guessed it. We need to represent the reaction in a scientific way. We do this by writing a balanced chemical equation. Can you still remember the steps we take to write balanced chemical equations? Let's recap them. Step 1. Write a word equation for the reaction. Reactants are placed on the left, products on the right, and in the middle, the arrow. Step 2. Change the word equation into a chemical equation. This is where you need to use the symbols of the element to write the correct chemical formula. Step 3. Check that the number of atoms of each element on the left of the arrow is equal to the number of atoms of each element on the right of the arrow. And step 4. Balance the equation by writing numbers in front of the formula. While these steps are fresh in your memory, let's write the chemical equation for magnesium together. The word equation for this reaction is magnesium plus oxygen reacts to form magnesium oxide. We can translate from words into chemical symbols by writing Mg plus O2 reacts to form MgO. From this equation, we can see that one magnesium atom reacts with one oxygen atom to form one particle of magnesium oxide. Does this accurately represent the chemical change taking place? No, this equation is not balanced. There are two oxygen atoms on the left of the equation and only one on the right. So, there must be a second particle of magnesium oxide formed in the product. We can show this by writing a large 2 in front of the MgO to give us 2MgO. The equation now has the correct amount of oxygen atoms on each side of the arrow. But the magnesium atoms are not balanced. The equation shows only one magnesium atom on the left and two on the right. There must be an additional magnesium atom as part of the reactants. To show this, I can write a large 2 in front of the Mg to get 2Mg. Finally, the equation is balanced and it is in the simplest ratio 2. See, the ratio is 2 is to 1 is to 2. I'm sure that you're finding it easier to write balanced chemical equations now than when we first started the series of lessons. The secret is practice. The equation for calcium reacting with oxygen is very similar to the one that we have just completed. Here it is. The word equation is calcium plus oxygen react to form calcium oxide. When we change the word equation to a chemical equation, it looks like this. Ca plus O2 reacts to form CaO. Notice that the number of atoms in the reactants is not the same as the number of atoms in the product. The balanced equation is 2Ca plus O2 reacts to form 2CaO. Now the equation is balanced and accurately represents the chemical change we have seen taking place. Today's task will give you another chance to check your progress in writing equations of your own. Write balanced chemical equations for each of the following reactions. Barium burning in pure oxygen to form barium oxide. Magnesium burning with sulfur to form magnesium sulfide. I hope that you'll join me for our next lesson when we will continue our experiments on the alkaline earth metal oxides. See you then. Yeah.